Hi again then guys, and uh, welcome to another look back to a unique vehicle, at least as far as Forza Horizon 1 goes. There are quite a few of those cars which were never featured before, and more often than not were never featured since. And that is of course the entire point of these videos, to look back at some of the coolest cars of the Forza franchise, which we simply don't have anymore. And this is one which I know stood out to a lot of people. It's based on a vehicle which was already hugely popular, very widely loved, the Lamborghini Aventador, the long-awaited replacement to the Murcielago, and of course it's gone from strength to strength with the Aventador, the Aventador J, the Aventador SV on newer games such as Horizon 3, and it's a car which gives you a lot to work with. You've got that big 6.5 litre V12, 700 horsepower already, the weight isn't too bad at 1575 kilos, plus of course you get Lamborghini's now trademark all-wheel drive, and the price is... Well, that's why it's not quite as good, because this is a 2.7 million credit car, making it one of the most expensive cars in the game. And to give you some idea of how that relates to some of the other best cars in the game, that's almost three times the price of a Koenigsegg CCXR edition, which is 1 million credits. It's also a lot more expensive, 900 grand more than a Maserati MC12 Corsa, and it's a hundred grand more than a Ferrari 599XX Evo. Now all of the cars that I just mentioned can, spoiler alert, destroy this car around most technical circuits. And in the case of the Koenigsegg, it can pretty easily destroy it in a straight line too. But of course, that's not really the point of the Aventador J, because this car falls into a very similar camp to certain other supercars or variant supercars to be more accurate about it, such as the Mercedes SLR Sterling Moss, and a couple of others too, and in a funny kind of way the Eagle E-Type Speedster as well, although of course not to the same level. And basically what I mean by that is it's this open top full-on Speedster version of an existing supercar that people already love, more often than not a coupe, you might already have a Roadster variation, that's certainly the case with the SLR for instance, but then they make it into this full-on old-school speedster with almost no windshield at all, usually a very small one just as a windbreaker, and stuff like the buttresses behind the seats, which this kind of has, the Mercedes Sterling Moss definitely has. As I've said before on the channel, I'm a massive fan of buttresses behind the headrests. I think it looks fantastic. The CLK GTR Roadster has that as well, and there are far too few cars which actually do have that. Now this is a machine which is more of a statement, really. It's kind of like the Centenario as well. It's a car that you don't buy because it's going to be the best. You buy it to make a statement. Or a Veneno, that's another perfect example. Now of course you can't buy either of those cars on Horizon 1, but this is very much so the equivalent to those kind of cars on the first game. Whereas on Horizon 3, you have even more expensive options like the Centenario and the Veneno. The difference being though, that I would say that both of those cars are more competitive on Horizon 3 than this one was on Horizon 1. Now it's not a bad car, not by any stretch, and even the category is fairly useful. It's R3, and it's quite low. 728 Pi gives you a lot of room to work with, even within that class. Now what I used to do with this car is I would upgrade primarily the power and get it around, I think it was 900 Pi, something like that, or it might have been 800, but I think it was 900. And you could get quite a lot of power out of it, and you can do this with a lot of all-wheel drive cars, and the all-wheel drive would allow you to focus almost purely on power, and the handling would kind of take care of itself. And it would allow you to have a car like this with much, much more power than something, for instance, like a Gumper Apollo could have in the same kind of class, or various other vehicles that are already a lot lighter. Now, in terms of what the car does offer, I already said you're looking at 700 horsepower, which, of course, is what the Aventador already has, just over 500 pound-feet of torque. The horsepower per tonne doesn't sound that intense at 444, but that's not bad, considering that the weight can be dropped by quite a bit, of course. And overall, I would say that this really is just an open-top Aventador. Now, of course, it's much more than that in the real world, but in the game, you might as well think of it in that way, because that's what it is. It doesn't really offer anything in particular that the normal Aventador can't do. So if you're looking purely for value, you are far, far better off getting an Aventador, or even a completely different supercar if you want to, with a very similar kind of result. And more often than not, 
a better result, because Lambos aren't the best of top-end cars in the Forza franchise, or in any franchise, generally speaking, because they're not really designed for that, usually. The fastest Lambos tend to do, what, around 220, generally? They don't really go much higher than that. And this car can, of course, be tuned. It can go well over a 1,000 horsepower, in fact. But again, it's the kind of car that I'd recommend choosing if you want to make a statement. It's the kind of car that you pull up in to show that you've got a ton of cash, and you can almost just afford to drive whatever you want, rather than just driving something that you know is going to be the best. Now, the disadvantage of that is it's not the best. So, <laughs> although you make a big financial statement, just like you would in an SLR Sterling Moss, it's not necessarily going to beat everything else out there, and it's definitely not going to beat everything else for the price, because just like the Veneno and the Centenario on the later games, it can be quite easily beaten. It's got the sheer numbers, it has the sheer price, and it's certainly exclusive. But don't go into driving this car, or especially racing it, expecting too much from it. It is basically just a really expensive open-top Aventador. Now, of course, it still has desirability. A lot of people used to love driving this car. I know a lot of people love the look of it. It's certainly unique. Personally, I'm not a fan of it, but I'm not a fan of the Aventador anyway. Overall, though, I can definitely see the appeal. I mean, I'm a massive fan of the SLR McLaren, but even I don't love the Sterling Moss, so I totally feel the same, basically, about this one. I can understand why people like it, but it's just not for me. The price puts me off, really, although clearly I do own one because I just bought everything for the sake of it, but if you are conserving credits and just looking for a good deal, you might as well just get something else. As I said, this car is purely a statement, so if you want to make a statement, by all means go for it, but apart from that, you could pretty much get the same kind of performance out of much, much cheaper cars, and in the case of something like an FXX, or I should say 599XX Evo, or the MC12, or an F50 GT, or even the mighty Koenigsegg CCXR, they're all a lot cheaper. So, if you're looking for pure value, and especially bang for buck, this doesn't even come close. It is, however, a nice toy. But, that's it for this pick overall. Of course, I'll see you guys next time, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.